Let's talk theater. Let's with talk theater. Julie Let's talk with these Julie Scott. Talk with these Julie Scott. Talk with these Julie Scott. Talk with these Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Theater. I'm your host, Julie Whitney Scott, and I am also the founder of the Columbus Black Theater Festival. And this year, we're bringing our ninth annual festival to the Abbey Theater of Dublin, Ohio. And we have 11 great plays that I am so pleased to be able to present to our audience, not only here in Columbus, Ohio, but throughout the United States and outside of the United States. I have with me today to talk with you all about her play. And first, let me say this. This play is so relevant in today with what's going on and has been happening with so many of our Black mothers who have lost their sons to police brutality. And I'll go to say they have lost their son through any kind of violence, but especially the mothers who have to deal with the aftermath of losing a son to a cop. A little harder to take sometimes because these are people that we pay to serve. These are people that we at times have told our young children, especially our young boys to respect, look up to, do what they say. Don't cause any waves. Sometimes that's still not good enough. Sometimes we still lose our boys. I have Mildred Lewis with me today. Mildred Lewis wrote the play called My Days After, which I am so proud and just honored to be the director of. Not because I personally lost a son, but I have lost nephews. I have watched my son suffer from the loss of other friends, boys that were in my home when they were kids, boys that I picked up and took to football, basketball practices, slept in my home, ate my food, listened to me for wisdom and love and had to deal with their mothers who lost their sons. So Mildred, first off, thank you so much. I'm so honored that you are with us. And I'm so honored that you took the time to write this piece. And what I would like for you to do is to tell our audience a little bit, because audience, you can go on Mind for God Production to see her bio and get information about her and other information. I want us on Let's Talk Theater to talk about this creative process. What made you, Mildred, decide to write this piece that, that touches and will touch so many Black mothers' hearts? Thank you so much. Um, I'm so honored to be here. Um, I was uh, a Buckeye for four years and I love the whole Ohio Black tradition. You know, going to um, the King District, uh, visiting Lorraine when I was an undergrad left me with a lot of memories. So thank you so, so much for having me. Um, I wrote this uh, piece because I think that we need to focus more on what Langston Hughes would call everyday Black people living everyday lives. Um, this is not a woman whose son was going to become a hashtag. Uh, she doesn't have the media poll. She's not in a big city. And I wanted to think about what happens after, after the funeral, after whatever media has, has happened. How do we pick each other up and hold each other after that's happened? And I'm not discounting fathers here, but I wanted to focus specifically on moms. We've seen mother after mother in front of cameras. But I also wanted to think about those moms who don't get an opportunity to be in front of the camera. What do they go home to? What do they deal with? Where are the resources for them? When they know that they're too often, their sons and daughters who have been brutalized. And I'm not just talking about people who have been killed. Uh, we often forget about the people who, you know, um, get uh, shoved around, who sit on the, on the side of the road in handcuffs when they haven't done anything wrong, uh, who get the kick and the push and the shove and the slap, you know, who are called, you know, racially um, derogatory names. And I really want us to think about as a community, um, certainly working to end those things, but how do we care for and recognize the people after the media cycle is over, when we all want to move on, when we all want to think about other things. So that was really my motivation, was to write about an ordinary woman who gets caught up, 
who won't be in the headlines, and for us to think about her pain and what it is that we might do to help that person, that mom, that sister, that brother, that friend. That's really good because that's what it, this, your piece does. It, it helps you look inside. And, and not only uh, of what a person is going through, but how other people react sometimes, thoughtlessly. Uh, the things that people can say sometimes to a grieving uh, mother. And I'm glad you also brought in the father. Because like you said, you know, this piece, My Days After, covers the thoughts and the feelings of a mother. But I'm sure a father has these same type of feelings, these same type of things. But I don't know, as you, as me, as a, as a, a Black woman writer, you know, I tend to want to try to write as, as a woman mm -hmm. because I feel that especially for the black man, it, their voice is, a lot, is different than mine. I mean, we, we, we have the, some of the same goals and things, but their experience, like you said, the sitting on the curbs, the laying flat out on the streets, you know, all the things that they have to go through, the humiliation of being pulled over, just that whole trauma that they have to deal with as a black man. And then also put on top of that, lose one of their sons <laughs> to that type of trauma. One of the things uh, in, in your uh, play, My Days After, is you, you talk about that. You talk about, uh, there's a scene where the mother is trying to reminisce about the good times she had with her son and how just sometimes people just won't let you do that. Talk to us about how and why you felt it was important to add that piece to it. It is so, so important. I think a lot about um, what it's like to be on that curb next to a Mercedes or next to a Hoopty, and then to have to come home and have people expect that you'll behave like everything's just normal, that it's just another day, and that we put so much on each other, you know, and, and without recognizing like what it takes to get through an average day. Um, and I think part of that answer has to be joy. And, you know, Nikki Giovanni is still one of my favorite poets. I mean, Nikki. I love Amanda Gorman, but, but I, I have to go back to Nikki. Um, and she talked about Black love being Black wealth. And I think for me during the pandemic, it's become very clear that our economic circumstances, our health circumstances, our legal circumstances are very precarious, right? This is something that we know. The antidote to that can't just be policy, although we need policy. It can't just be uh, legal remedies like reparations, although we need those things. We have to have Black love and Black joy as part of our experience. And we have to actively promote it because there are so many things uh, around us that are happening to us, happening to people who look like us, not just here, you know, around the world. You know, you're looking at Nigeria, you know, struggling with police brutality. You're looking at, you know, you know West Africans and Paris struggling with economic disparities. And every time we see those things and we hear them and people we love experience them, we're taking a hit. We're taking a hit spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. And so I really wanted to make sure that, um, that in the play, there's a moment where she refuses to let go of the joy she had with her son, even though he's imperfect. We shouldn't even have to say that. We shouldn't have to say uh, he had turned his life around or he was trying or, or she was on a different path. You know, Breonna Taylor should be with us today. Mr. Floyd should be with us today. Uh, your husband, my brother, shouldn't have been sitting on the hot curb today. Um, and so joy, I think, and love, love for each other, authentic, powerful, uh, complex love, not a love that says we're all perfect, not a love that says we're all demons, not a love that's classist, not a love that discriminates against anybody, but real, I, I mean, I would call it biblical love, or if, you know, if people are, are Muslim, Islamic love, but that, that quality of love and joy. Well, you know, you can't have a play without an actor, right? You've already met the playwright, Mildred Lewis. But what about the actor, the actress who's going to play this woman who has lost 
her son to police brutality. Who is going to help us understand the feelings and the emotions that that person is going through? That mother who has lost her, her son. I am so pleased to, and also honored to be directing one of the young ladies from right here in Columbus, Ohio, who I think is a dynamite actor. And I've seen her perform and she is great with monologues. You've probably seen her. If you haven't seen her on the stage, you've probably heard her in some club or another because she's also a singer who's well known right here in Columbus. She's even been to England. That shows you how popular she is with her singing. And so of course, we are so honored to have her be with us this year as we present to you guys, My Days After by Mildred Lewis and performed by Sonia Almond. Sonia, it's so great to have you with us this year. You've been with the Black Theater Festival before, doing certain different things with us, with the uh, Flow Theater. And yeah. now I've got you back here under my wings as your director under Mildred yeah. Lewis's My Days After. Why don't you tell us a little bit, Mildred's told us, her version of why she wrote this play in regards so that we can understand what it feels like for a mother to lose a son and, and what happens with them and how do they feel after it's all over and everybody leaves and then here they are after the funeral. Talk to us a little bit about your experience with this play and how you feel about this woman that you're playing. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to be a part of the uh, Columbus Black Theater Festival this year. It certainly is an honor. And uh, I want to thank Mildred for writing such a, an awesome piece that is so impactful. And it's so, um, it's so close to my heart and close to the experiences that I've experienced as a, a single Black mother who I have not personally lost a son, though I have three sons. But I have three sons who've lost countless numbers of friends. Now my oldest son is 27, my middle son is uh, 15, my youngest son is 14, and probably collectively they've lost about 30 friends, if not more. And, and I think that some of it's been through police violence, some of it's been through, you know, black on black crime, but, you know, loss is loss and it doesn't matter how it comes. And I think that this character embodies a lot of the women who have lost their children and how they try to cope and their strength and what they hope to impart in their children, whether they be male or female. The prayers of the grandmother that says, listen, I've got to make sure that not only is your, is your mom or dad protected, but you're protected. So the legacy that she's leaving you know, with being a hard worker, being not um, the stereotypical, um, you know, single mother that maybe you struggling to be on public assistance, but she's that working woman that whatever happened in her relationship, she raised two children. And in her mind, she was thought they made it. They, they got past the teenage years, the hard struggles. And, and I, we made it through, but unfortunately, her son was a victim. And I think she's learning to struggle through her own grief, continuing to be strong, continuing to have determination, continuing to show family what it means to, to, to go through the pain, you know? And, and I, I just appreciate this strong piece that, that shows a strong black mother standing in the gap for her family, which is what, connected me to it because I feel like I'm that woman. I've become that woman. I, you know, at first I was that woman, but I didn't have the experience to, to, to undergird the feeling that I felt. But unfortunately time and loss and experiences have made me be somewhat like MK Owens with the, with the connection with the loss, but not like her because fortunately my sons are still alive. But, I, but I, I agree with her with when one part she says, um, when she says, our people see our boys as gangbangers and she, she makes them real. Sam, Ahmad and, and Antonio, she makes them, her son's friends become her boys. So it's no longer 
just those are your boys, but they're my children too. And it goes back to the, the old adage of, of, of the African proverb, it takes a village. And so she has that mindset, it takes a village. And, and that's the one thing that I think we hope to capture that the, the passion and the, and the strength of who she is and her determination to carry on and her determination to try to prevent it from happening to anyone else, even this, is that someday it's going to be another family's turn. What, we, what I'm trying to do as a director, what you're doing as the actor, and what the playwright, you, Mildred, has written with all three of us bringing in our experiences as Black women, and, 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 and mothers and, and aunts and, and friends and sisters and, you know, and, and, and the extended families that we have, you know, the kids that call you, hey, mom, hey, hey, auntie, you know, there's mm -hmm. no blood relation at all. But just right. because of the connection that you have with these children through their youth, that they look at you as somebody that they can call family. You, right. you know, even if you're not, they can call you mom they can call you auntie uh mildred you start this play off with the countdown did right. the death of floyd george floyd propel you into this story because you start off with the countdown and anybody that hears that countdown is uh, thinks about that video thinks about the time of the the, the minutes the seconds, how you break it down from the minute to the, the seconds of another life gone, another black life gone. How did that, how, how much did his death and that the significance of how long, <laughs> how long it took for him, the cop to do it and for us to, to see it and that young girl to videotape it and be strong enough to stand there and say, I'm not gonna turn it off. How much did that influence your writing, My Days After, if it influenced it at all? It had been so much in the news, and it, it was definitely an influence, but I was thinking more about the moments that we lose. I was thinking about the minutes that Breonna Taylor was still alive and no one rendered aid. I was thinking about the way that Mike Brown in Ferguson uh, lay bleeding out, still alive, uh, with no one attempting to render aid. So I was thinking really, I, I was influenced by it, Mr. Floyd, but I was also thinking about all those moments where people could have been saved, uh, but the moments were allowed to just drift away and along with their lives and their spirits. And so know, for I me, the I countdown, think... oh, sorry. oh sorry. So for me, the countdown isn't just about uh, Mr. Floyd. It's not just about Ms. Taylor or the the hundreds of names that we could call from you know from from 1500s on today it's really about those stolen moments and what what it would mean those accumulated moments would mean those moments that you didn't have with family those moments you didn't have to build a business those moments that you weren't able to usher at church and so on i think you know that the the ending brings apart brings it into what you were just saying because that's how it is at the ending and that's how we felt at the ending, at the end countdown, we felt like, oh, because we started off thinking, oh, it's this, that, but then by the time we got through it, by the time we we heard her talk about, as Sonia say, about the boys, you know, in the neighborhood, by the time we got her, through her talking about everything that she went through, and then when we got to the end and and her talking to her her, her grandchildren them and trying to, to carry on, and at the end, when the countdown starts again, which we ain't gonna give too much away, but it comes to that. It's I like how you do that as a writer. I like how you brought that around because it starts off like, you know, like people thinking, oh, that count because it's so fresh in our mind, but there are others, so many others, you know, and you bring that out in the play of how the others could have went, how it could have been, you know, based on things that have been done, you, you, you know, have and have happened. So I, I really uh, appreciate that. And I think the audience will appreciate, appreciate it also. Uh, Sonia, 
what would you, as the, the actress, want people to take away the most, the most from your character? The, I, I think that, that, that the sense of family and community and the strong tie that she has to legacy, that how that is so important that we stay connected to one another. It, it seems like it's, a, it's like a subtlety that she put in there, but that for me, that's what stood out the most. That even though her son was gone, that she still felt a responsibility to say something about someone else's family, to find comfort for someone else's family, to find prevention for someone else's family, including her own. And, and that it's, it's all about community and village. And what can I do? Because she could have made a different choice to just say, I'm gonna ball up and, and, and just not live anymore. But I thought it was very courageous of her to say, I'm going to live and I'm gonna make sure that others live. And I'm gonna make sure that others don't forget. And, and, and the responsibility that we each have and in, in her desire to keep her family safe and keeping other families safe too. Mildred, I want to ask you the same question. As the writer, as the writer, what is it you want people to take away from my days after? The thing I want people to always take away from my plays um, is how can we uplift our people? How can we hold each other? How can we get each other over to the other side? Um, Maybe you walk past that mother whose son is locked up, whose daughter was abused by the cops, a, a kid who saw a shooting at school, and you don't know what to say. Um, but this play says you may not know what to say, but be there. At the minimum, be a witness. Because witnessing gives us the opportunity to make sure that the, the truth stays in play, right? That African-Americans are human, we are vital, we are vibrant, we are contributors, we are imperfect, and we are beloved, right? If the media doesn't love us, we need to still love us. If whoever is in the White House and the State House doesn't love us, we still need to love us. And I think that that has to be an overwhelming message. Again, it goes back to elevating Black love, you know, which my favorite po poet, Nikki Giovanni, says is Black wealth. Uh, can't go, you can't go wrong with Nikki. That's one of my favorites, too. Nikki, Angela Davis, I've got a whole list. <laughs> Bye, uh. <laughs> but Nikki was, of course, you know, from my generation, uh, started, you know, Black power. Well, I want to thank you, ladies, for being with me on Let's Talk Theater and talking about this wonderful play that I'm directing, that Sonia is performing, and that Mildred Lewis wrote. Yes. Mildred Lewis, playwright, Sonia Allman, actor, actress, Julie Whitney Scott, director of My Days After. Thank you so much. July the 9th through the 11th at the Abbey Theater in Dublin, Ohio. Go to Mind for God Productions, that's the number four, mindforgodproductions.com so that you can get your ticket information. It's going to be live this year. Yay! We're back hey. on the stage. I am so excited. But <laughs> also, we're going to have one day of streaming because we have playwrights from Australia and New Zealand. It's they just can't get here for that, okay? And I wouldn't want them or their fans to miss their production either. So we'll have one day of streaming, but three days of live performance at the Abbey Theater this year, July the 11th, 9th through the 11th. And we hope to see you there. Okay. Thank you for joining me, Julie Whitney Scott, your producer and host of Let's Talk Theater. A Mind for God production sponsored event heard only on WGRN LP 94.1. For the full video interview, go to my Julie Whitney Scott Facebook page.